Good morning and happy Christmas. As we gather for worship this morning to celebrate God is with us, Emmanuel, I'm going to invite you to repeat those words three times when I raise my hand. God is with us, Emmanuel. The word has become flesh and dwelt among us. God is with us, Emmanuel. Unto us a child is born, a son is given. God is with us, Emmanuel. His name shall be called the Prince of Peace. God is with us, Emmanuel. Well, as God is with us, across the Diocese of Guildford, as we gather in our different places, so we pray the collect for the first Sunday of Christmas, the prayer that collects us together. Almighty God, who wonderfully created us in your own image and yet more wonderfully redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Grant that as he came to share our humanity, so we may share in the life of his divinity, who is alive and reigns with you, one God, now and forever. Amen. came to see the baby stood by his mother's side here lay the savior inside a manger oh what a glorious night oh what a glorious night i hear the angels
sleeping Oh, what a glorious night Oh, what a glorious night Hi, I'm Karina. When I'm older, I would really like to go into business or to have a business. When I was little, I wanted to be an astronaut um, because it seemed like a really cool thing to do, um, flying around space and being like Luke Skywalker. And I didn't realise just how much hard work was actually involved in becoming one. When I grow up, I want to be an actress. When I grew up, I wanted to be a football player. I want to be a scientist when I'm older because I think it's going to be cool. I wanted to be a Blue Peter presenter or I wanted to be a Scripture Union holiday club leader. When I grow up I want to be a vet and an author because I like caring for animals and I like playing with them as well and I like reading books so I want to read my own books. you wanted to be when you grew up. When my son left primary school a few years ago, they gave them a yearbook. And in the yearbook, there was the memories and reflections of the children from their time at school, and also something about their hopes for the future. One of the questions they asked them is, what would you like to be when you grow up? There were lots of different answers, a famous dancer, a pilot, a YouTuber. But one little girl said, I don't have a dream job. I just want to be a kind and loyal friend. I wonder what you want to be when you grow up. Hi, Verity. Hey. What are you doing? Oh, I'm playing a game. I'm learning about a, a, a boy called Samuel. And he's got his own book in the Bible. Wow, that's amazing. Can I play? Yeah. Great. There was once a woman called Hannah. Hi. Who could not have any children. <laughs> This made Hannah very sad, as she wanted to have children of her own. One day Hannah was praying in the house of the Lord. She prayed for a child of her own and made a promise that if he gave her a child, to give him to the Lord for all the days of his life. A priest called Eli saw her and wondered if she was quite well. Are you okay? Yes, I am asking the Lord for a child of my own. Go in peace. Hannah went on to have a little baby boy, who she called Samuel. Hannah remembered her promise, and when Samuel was just old enough, she took him to Eli so that Samuel could grow up in the house of the Lord and serve God. Eli had sons, but they were like villains. Ah! They cheated people and did not follow God's words. I am not going to listen to God. I want this now. So what happened then? Maybe we should go back in time and find out. Definitely. In the meantime, the boy Samuel continued to serve the Lord, wearing a sacred linen apron. Each year, his mother would make a little robe and take it to him when she accompanied her husband to offer the yearly sacrifice. Then Eli would bless Elkanah and his wife and say to Elkanah, may the Lord give you other children by this woman to take the place of the one you dedicated to him. After that, they would go back home. 
The boy Samuel continued to grow and to gain favour, both with the Lord and with people. What an amazing story! God is good. Verity, I think you're taking the beard a bit too far now. Every year, the parents of Jesus went to Jerusalem for the Passover festival. When Jesus was 12 years old, they went to the festival as usual. When the festival was over, they started back home. But the boy Jesus stayed in Jerusalem. His parents did not know this. They thought that he was with the group. So they travelled a whole day and then started looking for him amongst their relatives and friends. They did not find him. So they went back to Jerusalem looking for him. On the third day, they found him in the temple, sitting with the Jewish teachers, listening to them and asking questions. All who heard him were amazed at his intelligent answers. His parents were astonished when they saw him, and his mother said to him, Son, why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been terribly worried trying to find you. He answered them, why did you have to look for me? Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? But they did not understand his answer. So Jesus went back with them to Jerusalem, where he was obedient to them. His mother treasured all those things in her heart. Jesus grew both in body and in wisdom, gaining favour with God and people. Hello, happy Boxing Day, happy second day of Christmas. It does seem a little rushed, 24 hours after we've celebrated the birth of Jesus, to be talking about his growing up, but that's where we are today. When I had given birth, 24 hours old, I was not thinking about growing up. I was thinking about managing a baby and managing all the well wishes. But in our readings, did you hear the young Samuel, who is noted for growing both in stature and in favour with the Lord and with people? And so with Jesus, it says he grew in wisdom and stature and favour with God and people. Those descriptions say to me, let's not underestimate the young people in our midst for their insight, for their wisdom, for their impact. I say that aware of the impact of some of our young preachers around the Diocese of Guildford speaking and preaching even over Zoom and on YouTube during lockdown. Well done. Young people, for their perspective, their voice, their gifts, they can be particularly effective, can't they? We only have to think of Greta Thunberg to realise that, or indeed my favourite young person at the moment. I'm voting for her in uh, Sports Personality of the Year, Emma Raducanu. Not just her tennis, but her, her outlook. She's so refreshing, isn't she? And I say that ahead of December 19th. I say it as a prayer. I say it in faith, wishing that she will win. So let me here speak first to the older Samuels among us. Those who are, I hope, young at heart. But who are the young people you know, you admire, whom you meet, whom you see, where you find wisdom and stature and favour? I wonder, would you write it down? Would you let them know? Will you nurture it so their voice may be heard, their, their scope expanded, their leadership, their leadership have impact for transforming church, transforming lives. And to the young Samuels and Gretas and Emmas among us here today, <laughs> hear the words of St. Paul to the young Timothy, don't let anyone look down on you because you are young. Rather, know your own capacity, know your own power to set an example, to be an influence to others in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, in purity. Our world desperately needs some good examples, some inspiration. Our church also longs for it. 
Frankly, there are far too many grown-up people around behaving badly. Please challenge us. But I know that takes courage. Courage if you're young to exercise your voice, to risk that you have a contribution to make because you will feel exposed. You will need a multi-generational community where it's safe to make mistakes, to take a risk. I hope that describes your church. And courage if you're old, courage where I can admit just how much I have yet to learn, courage to admit where I feel like I'm still a toddler when it comes to wisdom and stature and maturity, and where I can start again if necessary. I'd like to think the church is the place for that too. What is growing up? Let me end by quoting Prince William. He said, Growing up is about learning not to mess with your grandmother. Maya Angelou says, most people don't grow up, they just age. I want to say, let's make sure that growing up is about growing. Growing in stature and wisdom and favour with God and people. And that that growing is continual never ceasing to learn, being open to challenge, being ready to risk. That way, there's a chance that all the wisdom and stature and favour with which Jesus inspires us won't get boxed in, even on Boxing Day. May it grow. May it grow in you. May it grow in me. And may it grow through us in our world. Love incarnate, love divine Star and angels gave the sign Love to be
I pray for people who, who helped us with technology through COVID. Lord, I pray that all companies in the world today will make changes to have more ethical work practices and that all workers for these companies will be treated well and that there will be less fast fashion companies and more fair trade companies. Amen. We pray that we remember our childhood passions and optimism and hope and that God guides us to where we should be. Amen. We pray for people who are in the entertainment in industry, for they give us entertainment and joy and always make us laugh or cry. Amen. Dear God, please help the scientists to help by find ways to help get rid of COVID and other illnesses. Amen. I pray that everyone is safe and happy this Christmas time and that God blesses everyone. Amen. And Lord Jesus, we pray for all those in the football world and pray that they will be good influences on us. And we also pray for all of us that we can grow up in you, that we will grow in wisdom, in our understanding of who you are, in our stature as people who uh, look to you and in favour with both you and those around us that we might reveal you. In Jesus' name, Amen. And now we say together the Lord's Prayer. Let's pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. <laughs> So from my home to yours, we close our worship with the blessing. Christ, by his incarnation, gathered into one things earthly and things heavenly, fill you with peace and goodwill and make you worthy to share in his divine nature and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and always. And now go, go and find coffee and a treat. Ruby, come here, come here. There we go. Good job.